Hey everyone, my name is Amber Connor and I am the owner of Sinless Sweets Bakery out of Augusta, Georgia. We take your favorite breakfast and dessert items and we make the healthy versions of them. All of our items we offer back home are keto, low carb, sugar free, gluten free, and we even offer dairy free and vegan options. The best part about our bakery is that we take all of those items and we make kid friendly versions of them. So today we are gonna be doing all kinds of kid friendly desserts here in the kitchen. So the first thing we're gonna be doing is our dirt brownies, complete with Oreos and gummy worms. Perfect for all those little kids out there. And we're also gonna be doing some sprinkle sugar cookies, classic chocolate chip cookies, and our no-bake energy bites. So come along with me, join me in the kitchen while we have some fun. Welcome back everyone. So I am so excited about the first recipe that we are gonna be making today. So who out there loves brownies? I know that I do. I have a five-year-old and a two-year-old at home and they absolutely love brownies. Well, as a parent, we are always trying to get our kids to eat healthy, right? Well, as a lot of you know, that is super hard to do. So I'm gonna teach you how to make a kid-friendly dirt brownie um, that is perfect, that not only your kids will love, but you'll also enjoy too. So let's get started. So the very first thing you are gonna need is one cup of chocolate chips. So you can use regular chocolate chips, but honestly, I like to use sugar-free chocolate chips because it takes the sugar out of the recipe, so it makes it a little bit more kid-friendly. So you're gonna take one cup of chocolate chips with one third stick of butter. And all you're gonna do is take those two items, put it in a microwave-safe bowl, and put it in the microwave so it gets just like this, nice and melted. And so um, at my, in my microwave, I usually do it about 30, 45 seconds, but just depending on how your microwave works at home, just make sure it's nice and melted. So that's gonna be the very first step. So one cup of chocolate chips, one third stick of butter, throw it in the microwave, mix it together, and we're gonna take it and we are going to put it in a large bowl. So you're gonna notice with a lot of the recipes that we're doing today, it's all, it's all one bowl recipe. So it's super easy for you, super easy for the kids. If your kids are anything like mine, they love to help in the kitchen. So this is all easy recipes that they will have so much fun doing with you guys. So we have those. Now we're gonna add in um, two, of, two, two of our eggs. So um, back home, I use farm fresh eggs, but any eggs will do. So you're just gonna add two of those eggs right in there. And like I said, this is a one bowl recipe, so you can just add everything in the bowl all at one time. You don't have to worry about doing um, wet ingredients or dry ingredients. This next thing we're gonna be adding in is one third cup of coconut sugar. Now, I really like to use coconut sugar because it's allergy friendly, especially if you have a kid with allergies back at home. Coconut sugar works great for that. So one third cup of coconut sugar, one tablespoon of unsweetened cocoa powder. So let's just add that in right there. And then, of course, we wanna watch our sugar. So we use the sugar-free chocolate chips, and then we're also going to be using coconut sugar. So this is really great, um, especially if you have kids with allergies, or again, you're just trying to watch that sugar intake. Coconut sugar is a great sugar alternative that you can use. So again, just mixing all of that together. And then we have our vanilla. So that's just two teaspoons of vanilla, last thing to go in. And then we are just going to mix this all together. Now, because these are all healthy ingredients, they tend to mix really well. So as you can see right there, it's just mixed. And then that's it, that's all the ingredients. So from there, we are going to grab an eight by eight pan. So you can use a glass pan, you can use aluminum, um, whatever you have at home. So you're gonna uh, use that. We are gonna use our baking spray. Right. I've got my baking spray. Now you can use baking spray, you can use coconut oil, you can use butter, but I really like baking spray because it tends to help get those brownies out a little bit better. So you're just gonna um, spray your eight by eight pan and then you're just gonna take these ingredients right here and then you are just going to pour it in a pan. So it's super easy to do. Again, if you have kids that love to bake at home, this is a really fun recipe that you guys can do together. If your kids are anything like mine, they absolutely love to lick the brownie bowl, so feel free to let them do that. So you're just gonna mix that, and then you can just use this rubber spatula to get everything nice and even, or if you've got one of these spatulas at home, you can just use this, make it a little bit more even. And then we are going to um, throw this eight by eight pan of brownies in the oven. 
So make sure you set your ovens to 350 degrees and we are gonna bake this uh, between 12 to 16 minutes. So I'm gonna pop it in the oven for 12 minutes and then we'll be right back and see what it looks like. Hey everyone, welcome back. So I just pulled these amazing fudge brownies out of the oven. Um, in this oven, I did about 10 to 15 minutes. So depending on your oven back home, it may take anywhere between uh, 12 to 15. But as soon as those brownies come out, you can just set them right there on the counter. And while those cool, we are gonna move on to our very next recipe, which is our healthy, kid-friendly sugar cookies. So this is one of my favorites. It's one of my boys' favorites. And I know you guys are gonna love doing it at home. So let's get started. The very first thing you're gonna need is just get a regular uh, uh, mixing bowl. Um, just like I said before, everything is gonna be one bowl, so it's just fun uh, fun for the kids to kind of help you with. You just get one giant bowl and just let them throw in a bunch of different ingredients and the kids will love it. Maybe a little bit messy for you moms at home, but that's part of the fun, right? So, um, the first thing we have is going to be two cups of almond flour. Now, one of the really um, good reasons I like this recipe is because it's keto, it's low carb, it's sugar free, and it's gluten free. So I know your kids are probably not on a keto or low carb diet, but it is also healthy because it's gluten free, celiac friendly, um, and we're also making it sugar free, which is of course great for the moms and the kids out there. So two cups of almond flour, we're just gonna throw that in first. Followed by that is going to be one half teaspoon of baking powder. And again, like I said before, you can just throw everything into one bowl. You don't have to worry about mixing the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients. Um, so after the baking powder, we have one half teaspoon of baking soda. And then we have one full teaspoon of vanilla. So you can go ahead and just pour that in. Now we're gonna set the sprinkles off to the side because that is gonna be something we're gonna roll that dough in afterwards. Then we are gonna add one half cup of granulated swerve. So I love using swerve because it is um, strictly erythritol, which means it's not chemically enhanced. It's got no um, added sugars or anything else to it. Also makes it diabetic friendly. So if you have um, any family members with diabetes, it is diabetic friendly and it doesn't spike a one level so great for uh, adults and kids so that is swerve sweetener that's one half cup of that granular and then it's just gonna be one half cup of melted butter so as you can see here I have already melted my butter but uh, just pop that in the microwave melt that butter and we're gonna add that in so get all that butter and then last but not least we are going to be adding in two eggs so of course um, like I said you could do farm fresh eggs or you can just do regular eggs from the supermarket now, moms, if you're doing this at home with your kids, you may want to go ahead and do the eggs. That way you can make sure there's no shells in there. I know my boys like to try to crack the eggs, but I have them do it in a bowl first. That way no eggs, egg shells get in here. So we're just going to mix this. And again, you just want to mix it till it's just all combined together. Now with almond flour, um, it is a little bit different than regular flour. So it tends to absorb a lot of that moisture. So whenever you are doing this, um, you can do it one or two ways. If you have kids at home that are just anxious and willing and they wanna go ahead and do it, you can go ahead and um, scoop it out like we're gonna do today. Or you can throw it in the fridge for just a few minutes and it's just a little bit easier to add those sprinkles or those fun add-ins. So, um, what we are gonna do today is we are gonna go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna move all this stuff to the side and we are going to take our baking sheet. Now, if you've got parchment paper at home, um, you can go ahead and lay that parchment paper down. If not, you can just get some spray and just spray it. There you go. All right, so we're gonna set that off to the side. Now, if your kids are anything like my kids, they love all the sprinkles. So um, today we just have some different colored jimmies that we're gonna use. But um, like I said, you could do all different kinds of different um, sugar sprinkles or different color sprinkles. These are great for the um, holidays, uh, for Halloween and Christmas, because you can make it fun and add in different colored, like red, white, and blue. You could do orange and uh, black for Halloween, red and green for Christmas. So you can, get, you can get very creative with it. Again, if you're baking at home with kids, um, this part could get a little messy, but that's okay. That's part of baking and being um, in the kitchen with mom, right? So let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna take this scoop right here. And if you have an ice cream scoop, that tends to work the best. Um, if not, 
you can uh, just use a, a regular scoop or a spoon. Now, because this is a little bit more wet than I would like, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the fridge for just a few minutes, and you'll notice if you're following along with me at home, if yours tends to be a little bit more like this ingredients, it's not really gonna bake well, they're gonna kinda spread. So I'm gonna throw this in, um, in the fridge for about five to 10 minutes, um, and then, uh, and then whenever I uh, get it out, I'll show you how to finish it from there. So uh, let's go ahead and take a short break. I'm gonna throw this in the, um, in the fridge and we'll be right back. Hey everybody, welcome back. So I just grabbed my dough out of the refrigerator. So this was in here for about five to 10 minutes, just so it gets to the point where it just stiffens up just a little bit. It just makes it easier to roll out and doesn't make quite a big of a mess for you moms at home. So, um, so this is gonna be what that dough looks like. So once it kind of gets a little bit thicker, and of course you can use your hands, that's the fun part about it. So once it gets to about this consistency right here where you can kind of tear it apart, it's not slimy, that's gonna be the consistency that you want this dough. So we're gonna set that to the side. Let's go ahead and get our scoop out. So I am using an ice cream scoop today. This is what I have on hand. But of course if you have a cookie scoop, it makes it even better, probably a little bit less messy. But um, so we're gonna take one of these and then of course your sprinkles. So whatever kind of sprinkles you wanna use at home. Um, back home we actually use vegan sprinkles, so they're dye-free, sugar-free. Um, but if you're not too, too worried about that, you can just use any kind of sprinkles from the store. So um, for me, I like putting it all in one bowl for two reasons. One, it's fun for the kids, and then two, it kinda, um, the cookie adds, it gets more sprinkles on it. So we're just gonna take this dough you're gonna kind of roll it into a little ball. And then what I do is I just kind of, you see how I'm just kind of turning it in, those sprinkles. So what that does is it kind of gets sprinkles all over the cookie, um, which of course kids love sprinkles. So that is just um, a win-win for everybody. So you're gonna put them on here. Now you wanna make sure that you leave these cookies, they do spread a little bit, so make sure you leave them anywhere between an inch and a half to two inches apart. And then you're just gonna pat them down just a little bit. Again, you don't need them huge, you want them to be able to fit on the cookie sheet. So just tap them down just a little bit. So then you just grab your other scoop. Now, you can, I'm using sprinkles today, but you can also use um, mini M&Ms, crushed up cookies, just whatever fun little added, um, additives that, you, you know, that your kids may like. My kids love Oreos, so sometimes I'll crush up some Oreos and we'll put the dough in there. Um, mini M&Ms are also a great choice, but, um, but moms, you know your kids at home, so whatever they like, they, they will enjoy. So again, just putting them in here, just rolling it around. And then if you have kids at home, I'm sure they're having a lot of fun at this point because they are not only getting to help you in the kitchen, but they're also seeing that yummy goodness that you are putting on that cookie sheet. So we're gonna just do a couple more. We're gonna leave them a little, again, just one and a half to two inches apart. We're gonna pat them down just a little bit. So um, then you just wanna make sure that your oven is on 350. Um, and then I usually put them in um, between four to five minutes. Now remember we are baking with almond flour. So almond flour does cook quicker than regular flour does. So uh, four to five minutes, 350, and uh, we'll be right back. Hey everybody, welcome back. So while we have those uh, healthy sprinkled sugar cookies in the oven, we are gonna come back to the very first recipe that we did. So those brownies should have should be nice and cooled by now. Um, so now the next part of our dirt brownies is of course making homemade whipped cream. So if you guys don't know how to do that at home, I'm about to show you. So you're just gonna take one or two cups of heavy cream. Um, we really just need one cup for this, but if you're making a bigger pan, pan of brownies or if you decide to double this recipe, just know to double the heavy whipping cream as well. So one cup of heavy whipping cream, we're just gonna put this in a metal bowl, but any bowl will do that you have. Now I am using a hand mixer today, but if you have a stand mixer at home, that works just as, um, just as well. That's what I use back in my kitchen. And then you're gonna take one third cup of powdered sugar. So like I was telling you before, I use Swerve. Um, it is uh, the only artificial sweetener that's not chemically enhanced, so it is diabetic friendly, and of course everything is sugar free, so it's even healthier for those kiddos. So one third cup, and we're just gonna sprinkle that in there. And then, now you wanna make sure that whenever you are doing this, that you whip it on high. All right, so now that that is nice and whipped, we are going to add that to our brownie. So I'm just gonna set that to the side. 
and then we're just gonna grab a spoon. So you can grab a spoon, grab a spatula, but so you wanna make sure that that um, whipped cream gets nice and, um, nice and thick because that is going to go right on top of this brownie. So we are going to add this right here. All right, so now you just take this whipped cream and you're just gonna put it over the brownie, just like so. Now, if your kids are anything like my kids, they love this part because they love, just like they love licking the brownie bowl, they love uh, licking the whipped cream bowl as well. So we're just gonna get that nice and covered. And then after we add the whipped cream, now we are going to um, add in the crushed Oreo cookies. So if you um, just have regular cookies at home or um, Oreo cookies, I used a food processor to get these um, nice and crushed, but you can also throw them in a Ziploc bag um, and beat them with a rolling pin as well. Whatever you wanna do to make it a little bit easier, you could use a blender but you just wanna get them nice and soft. So the reason we call these dirt brownies is because it's a delicious ooey gooey chocolate fudge brownie, fresh made uh, whipped topping, and then of course this looks like dirt. So I grew up making dirt cups with my mom as a kid and I absolutely loved it. So of course now that I'm a mom, I have passed that on to my kids and what kids, uh, especially boys, doesn't like uh, dirt. So. So it looks like basically we're creating a garden. So it looks just like a, a dirt garden. And then um, I add in these fun little gummy worms just to kind of top it off. And you can kind of just place them all over there. My mom, when I was a little girl, used to like hide them in so it looked like the worms were coming out of the dirt. But um, so you just place them just like this. And now we have made healthy dirt brownies. So you have created a sweet treat for your kids that they're absolutely gonna love. They have so much fun making with you and is secretly healthy. So now that we've made these delicious dirt brownies and we have pulled these um, amazing sprinkled uh, keto sugar cookies out of the oven, we are going to move on to our next recipe, which is my famous chocolate chip cookies. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. So now that we are done with those brownies and those are in the fridge cooling, waiting for us to slice them, we are gonna move on to our next recipe, which is our healthy chocolate chip cookies. So if your family is anything like mine, a chocolate chip cookie is the most um, delicious cookie in the entire world. So we are gonna teach you today how to make the healthy version of a classic chocolate chip cookie that you and the whole family will love. So uh, just like all of our other recipes, everything is in one bowl. I try to make it nice and easy for everybody watching at home. Uh, that way we don't have to dirty up too many dishes. So uh, all you need is a bowl, your ingredients, and then of course just a spatula. So first things first, we are going to start with our almond flour just like we did in our other ones. Um, so this is a cup and a half of almond flour. So we're just gonna pour that into the bowl. Now, the next thing we are going to add is our butter and our coconut oil. So what I did is I went ahead and melted them together because if you are making this at home, you will need to do that. That way you can just make sure the butter and the coconut um, oil are nice and melted together before you add it into your dry ingredients. So this is just um, one fourth cup of butter and one eighth cup of coconut oil. So we are just gonna pour that in, get all of that delicious goodness in there. And then we are going to add in our egg. So just one egg. So we're just gonna add that in here. Place those shells to the side. And then we are gonna be adding in one third cup of coconut sugar. So again, I just really like to use coconut, soil, coconut sugar at home. Um, it just really has a nice rich taste and it's perfect for um, a really good decadent chocolate chip cookie. So we're gonna go ahead and start mixing that just a little bit. Then we are gonna add in one teaspoon of vanilla. So you can go ahead and pour that in. And then one half teaspoon of baking soda. So the only thing um, that you will notice that we are not adding in is going to be our chocolate chips. So you wanna make sure that you get your dough nice and melted, or not nice and melted, nice and stirred, I should say, before we add in those chocolate chips. If you add in the chocolate chips before, um, you have a risk of melting your chocolate and then you have chocolate cookies instead of classic chocolate chip cookies. So we get that nice and mixed. And so your dough's gonna look just like that. And then we are going to fold in one half cup of chocolate chips. So again, I use a sugar-free chocolate chips. It's just, they have a really great flavor, but also it just really saves, um, saves you all that sugar in, in regular chocolate chips. 
So that dough is gonna look just like that. So it's kind of similar to the sugar cookie dough that we did. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just let this chill for probably anywhere between three to five minutes in the fridge. And then whenever we come back, um, we'll finish up this recipe. All right, welcome back everyone. So now that my dough has chilled about three to five minutes in the fridge, um, that consistency is gonna look just like this. Just like with the sugar cookies, you wanna be able to pick it up, you know, um, and make sure that you can, it's, you know, you're able to scoop it onto, um, onto your pan. So uh, next you're just gonna grab your sheet pan or your cookie sheet pan, and then you're just gonna spray it. Now, again, if you don't have any spray at home, you can just use parchment paper. That's totally fine as well. So we're just gonna place that pan right here. And then we are gonna go ahead and start scooping. So I just use the ice cream scoop. Again, if you have a cookie scoop at home, that works great as well. So if you are doing this with your kiddos at home, I know my boys in particular, they love to scoop the cookies themselves. So if you have a little baker on your hands at home, this is really fun for them to um, just kind of step in the kitchen, help you and make them feel like they're, they're a part of, of the baking process. So you may have cookies that are bigger than others or you may have some that are a little bit, um, you know, a different shapes and sizes, but that's okay, they all eat the same, right? So the great thing about these cookies, mom, is that uh, you do not have to feel guilty about your kids eating these. These cookies are low carb, they're sugar free, they're gluten free. Um, and then you can also, if you have a kid with um, any kind of dairy allergies or egg allergies, uh, you can still make these cookies. All of these cookies are interchangeable. So if you have a kid at home with an egg allergy, you can use an egg replacer or a flax egg at home. If you have a kid at home with a dairy allergy, instead of using regular butter, you can use dairy free butter. So there's all different kinds of ways that you can kind of um, swap out different ingredients to make Make, um, them catered for your your kid who has allergies at home so uh, we're just gonna finish up these and then uh, just like with our other cookies uh, we're just gonna leave that oven on 350 and we are gonna bake anywhere between four to five minutes I'm gonna set my timer for four minutes because I like to check on them I don't want them to get too burnt so we're gonna throw these in the oven and you don't be with these cookies like unlike the sugar cookies you don't have to worry about patting them down you can just plop them on just like that and throw them in the oven for four to five minutes and so I'm gonna throw these in and we'll see you when we get back. Welcome back everyone. So I have just taken our delicious chocolate chip cookies out of the oven. And as you can see, I have already plated our sugar cookies from earlier. So you can see how um, just delicious that these cookies are. I mean, they're soft, they're decadent. Um, your kids are gonna absolutely love them. And then of course we have our chocolate chip cookies. So I don't know about your kids or yourself personally, but I love a delicious warm chocolate chip cookie. So as you can see, these have just come out of the oven. It's nice and soft, pillowy, chocolate chip. I'm sorry, I've gotta take a bite, but right after this, we'll be right back and I'm gonna show you how to make our no-bake energy bites. See you guys soon. Welcome back everyone. So now that we have made our delicious chocolate chip and sugar cookies, we are moving on to our first no-bake item that we've done on the show. And it is a peanut butter energy no-bake bite. So basically what this is, is it's tons of healthy ingredients, secretly healthy ingredients that you can give your kids that is going to be good for, um, for energy, but also low sugar, um, but also that you can make kid friendly um, so they don't really feel like they're really eating anything healthy. So um, first we are gonna start with just um, our regular mixing bowl and we are gonna start with um, oats. So I use uh, quick oats, but you can also use rolled oats as well, but we're gonna put the oats in first. So after we do the one cup of oat, um, one cup of oats, we are going to do one half cup of peanut butter. So like I talked about before, all of my recipes can be made allergy friendly. So if you have a child that has a peanut allergy um, and cannot have peanut butter, you can also use like sunflower butter would be another option for that. Um, and then after we add the peanut butter, we are gonna add in the one third cup of honey. So just like all of our other ingredients, everything is in one bowl. You don't have to really worry about what um, order you add it in as long as it all makes it in there, that's all that counts. 
So we've added in our oats, our peanut butter, and our honey. And now we are going to add in our uh, chia seeds and our flax seeds. So moms, this is great. It's, they're really two really healthy ingredients for your kids. Um, I love Bob's Red Mill. This is what I use at my bakery back home. Um, so if you can find that out there in your stores, definitely recommend using this ingredient. Um, great company. But we're gonna add one fourth cup of chia seeds. So we're just gonna add that into the mixture. And then one fourth cup of flax seeds. So these are regular flax seeds. You can also use the ground flax seeds. Um, if your kids are anything like my kids, I use the ground ones. Um, that way you don't have any questions of why does it look like that, mom? So uh, we have, uh, so we're mixing this all together. So as we mix this together, I'm gonna kind of explain to you all the different add-ins. So this is a really good base recipe. Um, that's uh, another fun recipe that you can do with your kids. Uh, it's a one bowl recipe. You just mix everything together. Um, now with this, because you have the peanut butter and the honey, you wanna make sure you mix it really, really well before you add in all of those fun, ingre uh, the fun additives that we're gonna add in today. So we're just gonna mix this, perfect. Okay, so um, my boys love sprinkles. They love, my youngest is two, and he absolutely loves mini M&Ms. Um, and then I like chocolate chips. So this is a recipe that could be fun for the entire family. Um, and uh, also just, just fun, uh, something fun you can do at home with the kids. So uh, we have our chocolate chips, so I'm gonna add those in. That's mom's favorite. Then I'm gonna add these sprinkles in just to make it a little bit colorful. Again, my oldest loves sprinkles. And then my youngest loves m and so we're gonna add these in for him. So now if you look at that, we have all of these ingredients in there. So we have our base recipe, but then we also have the chocolate chips, the mini M&Ms, and then the sprinkles. And so you just fold all of those ingredients in together, just like that. You can see how it kinda comes to life a little bit, all that color in there. And then, like I was telling you before, this is a no-bake item, so after you mix it, um, all we have to do is simply just plate it um, and then put it in the refrigerator, and it is good in the fridge seven to 10 days. So um, all of these recipes that I've shown you today, um, there are no preservatives in them, so they're good in the fridge seven to 10 days, and then if you can't finish them within seven to 10 days, feel free to just put them in an airtight container, and they freeze for 30. So, all right, so we're gonna take this pretty tray that we got right here, and we are gonna start plating these no-bake energy bites. So I take mine in my hand and I kinda, that's probably a little much, but I don't wanna give them that much. But you just make them in circles and you can just plate them. So you can make them as big or as small as you want. Again, if your kids are anything like mine at home, they love helping in the kitchen. This is kind of the fun part because they can kinda get their hands dirty. All the hard work is done. So all we're doing is just plating these, and then you're just gonna put them in the um, in the refrigerator, I would say anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. Um, if you have some kids who are not quite as patient, you can throw them in the freezer for about five. So we'll just plate these right here. But this is, um, like I said, this is a really good recipe. Um, it's, it's no bake, so it takes no time at all. I think from start to finish, it's maybe like five minutes. So. Um, so here we go. So that's just some of the ones that we created. So again, mom, these are just healthy no-bake energy bites. This is great to secretly get your kids to eat a little bit healthy, but also letting them have a little fun in the kitchen and adding in some fun little ingredients along the way. So thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. So I am gonna finish assembling these uh, beautiful no-bake energy bites and uh, we'll be right back. Thank you for joining me on today's episode of Sinless Sweet Treats, where we made so many fun-filled desserts, such as sprinkled sugar cookies, chocolate chip cookies, dirt brownies, and our fun no-bake energy bites. If you have any questions for me, uh, feel free to follow me on my Facebook and Instagram page, at Sinless Sweet Treats, or uh, to find out more about how Sinless Sweets got started, and to find out more about our shipping menu, you can check out our website at www.sinless-sweet.com. Join me next time as I come in the kitchen and bake more treats without the cheese.